Dit is Papa Alfa 0 Eco Tingo Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag. Dit is het bulletin van zaterdag. Today's bulletin, as always on Saturdays, will be in English. At the end of the bulletin, we first have the Morse code word. SSTV this time is in PD90, which can be received on smartphone using, for instance, Robot36 on Android and CQ SSTV on iOS. This is GP2RS, the news broadcasting service of the Radio Society of Great Britain. It comes to you from G4NJH in Nottingham. You can find the text on the RSGB's own web page. Now for the radio propagation compiled by G0KYA, G3YLA and G4BAO, this week saw some fantastic 6 metre propagation with the band behaving more like 20 metres. Multi-hop sporadic key contacts were made across the Atlantic as far west as Arizona and south as far as Texas. Six Meters is a band that can exhibit both VHF and HF qualities, although we'll leave any further sporadic key discussion to the VHF section of the report. As for the rest of HF, the scene has been dominated yet again by unsettled magnetic conditions, the Solar Dynamics Observatory's extreme ultraviolet image on Thursday showed extensive coronal hole activity and the K-index was pushed to 6 later on Tuesday, June the 14th, and the early hours of Wednesday the 15th. This activity has been predicted for last weekend, but the solar plasma arrived at a couple of days later. The solar flux index declined to 87 on Thursday. This week's NOAA predicts the, uh, this week NOAA predicts the solar flux index will be in the range of 85 to 95 with unsettled geomagnetic conditions possible on Friday and next weekend. Noontime F2 layer maximum usable frequencies over a 3000 km path are hitting 18.2 MHz at times, whilst 20 meters is remaining open during the night, according to the Chilton, the Chilton Digisond, but the real thrills are the continued sporadic E events on the upper HF band, so make the most of them. Now the VHF and up, the second half of last week produced some great openings as sporadic E developed along a major summer jet stream. With core speeds above 100 knots, it affected much of the usual favoured locations for sporadic E over the continent. The southwesterly jet was disturbed as it crossed the Pyrenees and Alps to give, opportuni- to give options around the compass for many stations. There were also some notable transatlantic paths using the waving jet stream flow to the west to give the necessary stopping off points for multi hot paths to the USA and the Caribbean. There will be some jet stream activity over Europe this week, but the flow will be weaker, and therefore any sporadic key produced may be more fleeting, so not such a good week. The prospects for Tropo are marginal, with a weak ridge of high pressure to the west and a slack flow over the country. These patterns normally produce some limited Tropo overnight and around dawn, but these are often short-lived since in the summer the temperature inversion soon breaks down once the sun gets up. Keep an eye on the gigahertz band rain scatter if showers break out. With the moon at lowest declination on Tuesday and losses still high, EME will be poor this week with short moon windows, so perhaps it's time to look at some satellite operation. That's it for this week from the propagation team. The 70 centimetre beacon, a new 70 centimetre beacon GB3 UHF, went on the air on Wednesday, the 15th of June. It's located at the same site as its sister beacon GB3 VHF at BT Fairseat in Kent, JO. 01EH uses the same type of three element Yagi antennas pointing in the same direction as those used on GB3 VHF and radiates a similar ERP. It'll be very useful to determine the propagation characteristics of VHF and UHF simultaneously. The keying format follows that closely to that used by GB3 VHF. The support from BT for scientific and VHF UHF propagation research in this field is very much appreciated. Full details of the new GB3 UHF beacon, which operates on 432.430 MHz, can be found online at www.gb3vhf.co.uk and reports to the keeper G0FDZ will be most welcome. Next weekend, several amateurs with special permits will be operating on medium and long wave throughout the ARRL's field day on the 25th and 26th. Operation will be on 185.3 kHz and several spot frequencies in the 472 kHz band. Details of the participating stations can be found at tinyurl.com forward slash gb2rs hyphen us hyphen mw. 
This Thursday is National Women in Engineering Day. Hilderston Radio and Electronics Club will be visiting Wellesley House School that day, where some 60 girls will be attending from around six schools. The day will include amateur radio, design and computer technology, and electronic science activities for the girls. In the Queen's Birthday Honours, Danielle George, Professor of Radio Frequency Engineering at the University of Manchester, was awarded an MBE for services to engineering through public engagement. Quoted in The Guardian, she highlighted amateur radio enthusiasts as an inspiration to the next generation of tinkerers. Also in the birthday honours, astronaut Tim Peake, GB1SS, was awarded a CMG for services to space research and scientific education. The award was offered and accepted whilst Tim was on the International Space Station. It was thus the first in history to be offered to a person whilst they were not physically on planet Earth. Ofcom is changing its online licensing system that supports amateur radio. The change is part of a wider initiative to upgrade its licensing system. New facilities will include the ability for clubs to apply for the first time online. The changes will be phased in with further features added over time. More information, http 2.2 slashes licensing.ofcom.org.uk Worthing Radio Events Group is running a portable HF station from the grounds of Gratwick House, Gratwick House Care Home in Littlehampton, West Sussex. The station is active today, the 19th, from 1 to 5 p.m. BST, so that 91-year-old Peter Craw, G3CCX, can get on the air for the day. Peter expects to concentrate activity on 18 MHz. All contacts are very welcome. According to DX World and the Daily DX, Polish DXer Don Grib, that's probably not pronounced properly, G R Z Y B, 3Z9DX has received confirmation that North Korea will authorise a five day operation. Permission is expected to come at short notice and is unlikely that there will be any advanced publicity. He will only operate SSB and on one band, either 2015 or 10. The Democratic People's Republic of Korea is the number one most wanted DXCC entity, and Dom managed a brief activation last December, <clears throat> the first for many years. Sad news now that DXer and expeditioner Milt Jensen, N5 IA, or that is that N51, no, it's N5 IA, died on the 9th of June after falling from an amateur radio mast. He was 73. He took part in the XZ1N and XZ0A, the expeditions to Myanmar, was part of the Dulce Island VP60XD expedition team. The 2015 Best Communications Award from DX Coffee and the DX University has been assigned to K1N, the expedition to Navassa, which took place in February 2015. The day expedition took place after many years' attempts, and the website www.navasadx.com got many people involved in the details. The team also made good use of Facebook for news and pictures, and sent some tweets. <coughs> team member Glenn Johnson, W0GJ, spoke about the expedition at the 2015 RSGB convention, and RSGB members can watch a video of his talk online in the video archive. Former lightship, lightship planet, home to the special call sign GB2 LBL, was the last manned lightship in the UK. Now permanently moored in Liverpool, the owner, Alan Roberts, together with the Marine Radio Museum Society, reports that she is in financial distress. They have set up an information page which also solicits donations, www.chuffed, that's C-H-U-F-F-E-D, forward slash project, forward slash save the planet Liverpool. Dunkswell Airfield in Devon aspires to establish an amateur radio station on the site, similar to GB2IWM, the Imperial War Museum, at Duxford Airfield. Rather than a club radio club, its primary mission will be the collection, restoration, exhibition and display to the public of historic radio communication equipment in support of the Imperial War Museum. As there is no nearby amateur radio club, Devon DRM Martin Sables, G7NTY, is coordinating volunteers and would be pleased to hear from anyone who might be able to help. 
please contact him via email to drm112 at rsgb.org.uk. Daily Minutes zijn dagelijks om 1900 uur te beluisteren op PI2 NOS en ochtends om half elf. Nou, dat weten we dan ook weer. Ja, interessant. En straks het journaal weer. Ja, dat moeten we niet missen. Heb je zin in koffie? Ja, lekker. <middels>